1947, a group of parents got together behind a common goal, their children's education. These children, however, were all deaf or severely hard of hearing. That first year, five students met in the Bowley home in Northeast Portland to be taught by Alice Maxson, a longtime teacher of the deaf in Portland. The program was a success, and the little school moved to a new location, another house in Northeast Portland. In 1950, Max Tucker, the school's financial benefactor from day one, passed away, leaving a $250,000 gift to the school. Max Tucker's gift paved the way for a permanent school to be built. This allowed the school to help more children and eventually expand from preschool and early elementary education to providing an oral education to children all the way through eighth grade. So when Tucker first started uh, providing services to students with hearing loss, they were able to provide amplification, but just making things louder is not enough for a person with hearing loss. We have to make things clearer. And so learning to listen and talk was a much more challenging uh, endeavor than it is now. One of the biggest jumps in hearing technology was the introduction of the cochlear implant. The first patients were being implanted in the early 80s. Tucker Maxson partnered with Child's Work Preschool, offering hard of hearing students an opportunity to participate in activities with their typical hearing peers on a part-time basis. I was at Tucker Maxson in the late 80s and early 90s. I was mainstreamed into the public school system full-time in first grade. And prior to that, I had been doing sort of half weeks at Tucker Maxson and the other half of the week in a public preschool as well as at Tucker. Some of the fond memories that I have of Tucker Maxson, uh, I remember the playground. It's very much kind of had the same core as it did 20 years ago. The wooden fort that's there and the, the red fire truck structure. I remember very much meeting actually on that red fire truck structure. Uh, we took a picture with Miss Heather Whitestone, who was the first deaf Miss America, and she came to visit Tucker Maxson in the early 90s. What? I had room for the triangle. I did what I'll show you what I did. I found out that Jaden was hearing impaired in the hospital when he was a newborn. They tested Drew and we held our breath again and Drew passed and then they did the test on Jaden and um and they did the test three times and then they told me Jaden didn't pass. And it's a hard moment because you feel like, um, what does that mean? You have really no idea. It turned out that it was sensory neural unilateral hearing loss. So the nurse there on the spot tells me, oh, Jaden won't need any services. He's going to be fine. I came to find out that Jaden's hearing loss was genetic and that there were three other people in our family who had hearing loss very similar to what Jaden had. And, you know, they told me we really struggled in school. I remember telling my husband that it would be a shame for him to be behind in school just because of his hearing loss. So I gave Tucker Maxson a call. The benefits to my family have been enormous. It's been a huge advantage having an audiologist on site and a speech and language pathologist on site. I can leave here with confidence, feeling like if there's anything wrong with his hearing aid, they're going to catch it. This is a really familiar environment for all of the kids here. And I have all the equipment that I need here in order to complete any audiology test that someone would need. And so anytime I have to do any kind of procedure or testing with a child that at the hospital they might be afraid to do, here it's with a familiar face and in a familiar place, and so it's much easier for them. And another big plus for Tucker Maxson audiology is that I am just one of a group of professionals working with all of these kids. So there's a speech pathologist and teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing. And I'm on a team with all of those people. And all of those things make you a real integral part of the child's life. The new millennium ushered in a new era for the school. Improvements in hearing and classroom technology allowed Tucker Maxson to expand on its earlier successes with Child's Work Preschool and fully integrate its classrooms from preschool through fifth grade. The benefits for Lauren being in a a school this size have been huge. He, I feel like he's had so much personal attention in his class. I felt like he picked up reading really quickly. He was excited about it. He's had a chance to see that other kids are different from him. 
There's so much opportunity here for Lauren to get his energy out and PE and recess time and then he can come back in and focus on what he needs to do in class. He's doing really, really well in this environment. Really what this is here, it's a community and it's a community with a common goal of helping these students learn to listen and talk and learn together and I'm not just talking about students with hearing impairments, I'm talking about all the students and growing into that community over this past year has, uh, has been truly amazing. I really am thankful that this opportunity to attend Tucker Max and to receive an oral education because without it, it would be much more difficult to succeed in what is largely a hearing world. I think when I first learned that Jaden was hearing impaired, I felt like he was going to have a lot of limitations. I worried that he wouldn't be able to go to college, that maybe he wouldn't even graduate from high school. Look at everything that Jaden can do. And if it hadn't been for the newborn hearing screen and learning about Tucker Maxson's school, I think that he wouldn't be doing those things. I feel like he can do anything. I feel like he could have a PhD. Maybe he'll go to the moon. I, I don't think that his hearing impairment will limit him in any way.